Hi, I'm Tyler Nikhil. And I'm Ruthie Judah. We are two financial consultants at NB Enterprises Incorporated, and we are here today to present you your personalized stock portfolio analysis as part of our customized services. All right, now we're going to talk about some of our top picks here. You might have heard of it, a small company called Apple. Let's get into the brass tacks here. Apple's obtained an average return of 31.3% annually and 0.1225% daily compared to the average annualized market S&P 500 return of 11.821% average daily, return of 0.049 for 5%, as displayed in our frequency distribution exhibits. Apple has consistently outperformed the market during the last several years in terms of stockpile price, albeit additionally Apple has shown a standard deviation of 1.6786 over the past five years compared to the S&P 500 standard deviation of 1.0067. Also, Apple's daily variance has been at 2.81 compared to the S&P 500 variance of 1.01. This shows that their stock has been more volatile than the market, although the higher volatility and risk has paid off for the investors. Though ratio analysis of Apple, we have seen their quick ratio is 0.89, their current ratio is 1.11, and their debt to equity ratio is 0.49, showing that they have more than enough liquid assets to cover their current costs, and are not leveraged enough to increase the risk for investors. Additionally, their gross margin has been 40.10%, with a P.E. ratio of 11.79, achieving a 42.80 ROE. This high level of profitability is largely what is behind their increase in share value and return for investors. With the addition of Apple achieving a five-year compounded annual growth in revenues of 29.10%, this company is a promising opportunity for investors at the present time. Yeah, I don't think anything is going to be that. Like, the numbers the numbers are there, Tyler. The numbers are there. Everybody has something Apple, but they exactly. haven't really been innovative lately, so that could hurt in the future. Honestly, the I think the big issue is that, like you said, innovation, all innovation, Nothing has really changed with the model of the Apple iPhone or Apple product since I'd say the early 2010s, around there. Yeah, nothing's been new. It's been the exact same products with slightly improved specifications, but people somehow continue to buy them. Brand loyalty, brand yeah. loyalty. Look but at, in the future, look at companies like Microsoft, the Microsoft Surface tablet you have. It's an amazing device, it can do anything. It's an iPad, it's a mm -hmm. MacBook Pro, mm -hmm. and it outperforms both, but people are still flocking to Apple. We'll see if that continues into the future. In the near future, I'm not, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. I'd say this is a good pick, but you might want to consider their lack of innovation and their declining sales in the mobile industry as Android continues to show prominence well going forward. And points, now this is what's our to top pick, Google. Google's been an amazing company, obtaining annual average returns of 13.81% as well as average daily returns of 0.0637% compared to the average annual market return of 11.821% and average daily returns of 0.049% in the S&P 500. Uh, they've consistently outperformed the market, albeit very slightly. So another option that you might want to go for there is purchasing index funds. But Google's a safe pick as it's Android's Google. picking up in sales and it's Google, like you said. It's Everybody uses around. it as a search engine. They're the number one ad revenue generator online. Exactly. They're not going anywhere. 100%. Their standard deviation of 1.5683 compared to the S&P 500 standard deviation of 1.0067 coupled with a variance of 2.4595 compared to the S&P 500 variance of 1.0134. It definitely shows a bit more volatility, but once again, it's Google. You're going to get more same thing. return for that kind of risk and that kind of volatility. As an investor, it's a fairly riskless stock, but the risk is always going to be there for an independent asset. You just got to make sure that you Weight your portfolio pop properly, exactly. which is what we're here for, right? We're gonna help you there. Yeah, we're, we're gonna, gonna help you there. there. Not everybody knows, but we're letting you know how to invest, and we're the guys that are gonna take care of it for you. Through a ratio analysis of Google, we've seen that their quick ratio is 4.67 and their current ratio is 
With a debt to equity ratio of 0.04, it would seem that Google owns almost next to nothing physical, mm -hmm. but it's the human capital that their firm... And that's all they need, really. Yeah, exactly. That's why they've stayed afloat for all, these, all, all this time. Yeah. They've got guys coming from Harvard, MIT, some of the world's best universities, oh. and they're innovative. These guys are amazing. If I wasn't working here, I would be working for Google. Let's be yeah. honest here. Yeah. Let's be honest Man here. Man can dream, right? <laughs> Man like can a dream a lot guy. more. Additionally, their gross margin being 62.4% with a PE ratio of 33.66, while achieving a 13.9% return on equity shows that they're not a largely equity-based firm. It comes in the services they provide for their people. Like Which comes in spades, though. It comes in spades, Tyler. It's true. But ad revenue. Yeah, ad revenue. When was the last time you used a search engine besides Google, man? Literally, ask Jeeves probably in 1999. Yeah, nobody wants to know what Jeeves is. I, I'm aware. Anymore. Trust me. It's all about Google, man. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. Google has achieved a five-year compounded annual growth in revenues of 20.7%. Wow. Which these guys just keep going up. That's they're, what I'm saying. They're into mobile phones now. Good God. Like, they're like, over a third of the market now. More than two decades on these guys' belts, and they're, they are it. They are, the, the, they are Google. Did you Google it? Probably. They edged out BlackBerry after Apple weakened them. And mm -hmm. Now they're... They're titans. They're taking out Apple slowly but surely. And that's why we're one of our top picks. Nobody wants to pay $700 for a phone. You can get the same features for 100 Exactly. People are starting to realize that and... Slowly. Google's gaining where Apple's hurting. And that's why they are top pick. Another question that you guys asked us was to analyze Ford as an investment opportunity. This is probably the worst stock that we've analyzed in quite a while. Not only did they go bankrupt a few years ago, since being bailed out by the American and Canadian governments, they've been able to achieve a average annualized market return of 6.55%, with an average daily return of 0.04%. Comparing this to the S&P 500 returns, it's definitely a lower returning stock. They are profitable, but at 6.55%, they're definitely not worth the risk. Their standard deviation of 1.8593 compared to the S&P standard deviation of 1.0067 with a variance of 3.45 compared to the S&P 500 variance of 1.01 .01 shows that the volatility in this stock definitely makes it a little risky. If you're lucky, you might be able to earn a little bit on it, but it's unlikely that this stock is going to skyrocket and earning a large return any time in the near future. Our ratio analysis of Ford showed that their quick ratio is 6.77 and the current ratio is 7.18. With a deck to equity ratio of 4.64, this firm is heavily leveraged. They owe an ridiculous amount of money that if it wasn't for the bailouts, they likely wouldn't be afloat at this point. Their gross margin has been 15.4% with a P-E ratio of 6.96 and achieving a 27.5 return on equity. But they're a car manufacturer, they're going to have a large amount of equity. So you have to keep that in mind when you're analyzing those numbers. Mm -hmm. They're just not what they used to be, Tyler. They're just not what they used to no, be. No, definitely not. The car market's definitely more competitive than it has. You have all the South Korean... Auto exactly. manufacturers, you it's got just Hyundai, you got Kia, and they're producing what many would argue are superior products compared to Ford. 100%. It's just like these exter external forces they are creeping in on the domestic market, and you know what, really, uh, really, really showing the domestic markets that they have something to work for, and they have competition out there. If they didn't produce a damn good truck, they'd be yeah. having some problems. Exactly, exactly with a lackluster five-year compounded annual growth in revenues of only 3%, that Ford definitely would not be one of our picks as we don't see the stock going forward. No, we don't see any, any they're benefits. They're continuing to move jobs south of the American border, out of Canada and the United States, mm -hmm. and overseas to try to reduce costs. But we'll have to see if that works out. 
I doubt it, Tommy. I doubt it. Lastly, we got Berkshire Hathaway with their Class B stock. Warren Buffett's notorious for outperforming the market, and he's risen to be one of the world's richest men while allowing the public to invest using his investment strategy at his firm, Berkshire Hathaway. They've never not outperformed the market, and this is probably a trend that will continue into the distant future, or until Warren's not around, weirdly. <laughs> Unfortunately, yes. We, we, we love Warren. We love him. Their, uh, their annualized market returns for the last five years have been 43.1395%. No other company is going to achieve something like that. Mm -hmm. That's just insane. Yes. It's the diversification that they show in their portfolio that really what skyrockets it's into the niche. Amazing. They're the zenith. They're the apex yeah. at, at uh, of the market. Right Nobody's going to be Warren Buffett. Like, never. The man he is and Warren Buffett and money. Their daily returns of 0.0495% that we found, it's a great number. Mm -hmm. Can Our standard that. deviation of 3.6513 compared to the S&P 500 standard deviation of 1.0067 with a variance of 13.3317. Compared to the S&P 500, 1.0134. It shows some volatility. It's definitely a volatile stock, but they always climb forward. They're always forward moving. And I've risked it for the biscuit on that one. I've risked it for the biscuit. A ratio analysis that we performed at Berkshire Hathaway, we've seen that their quick ratio is 2.69, current ratio is 2.99, and their debt to equity ratio is 32.98. This is a heavily leveraged firm, but all they do is financial services. You're not smart if you're not borrowing the money in order to invest it. Exactly. Why risk only your own money when you know what's going to happen? Look at their history. Their gross margin has been 25.51% with a PE ratio of 14.45, and they've been able to achieve a 9.72% ROE. On top of that, with their leveraged capital that they have, they've achieved the amazing result of having a five-year compounded annual growth rate in revenues of 39%. Ye doggy, ye doggy. Nothing's going to be that return on an individual company. That's going to be Warren Buffett. We always talk about a diversified portfolio when we send you reports. It's so investing right in Berkshire Hathaway, you got a diversified portfolio in one stock. You can only pick one stock, yeah. pick Berkshire. You've calculated the betas of each asset, I guess the optimal for portfolio, as well as the market index portfolio. These are she seen in the exhibits at the end of your report that you have previously received. In figure seven and eight. Let's wrap this up, or I'm done. I feel as though they're probably tired of us talking. Honestly, I'm tired of us talking. All right. I hate us. It is commonly known that the portfolio diversification can reduce risk. However, blindly making investment decisions in the pursuit of risk reduction can lead to faulty decisions. In our example, we have shown that when making an optimal investment decision based on the five risky assets and the risk-free asset, we did not we do not get engaged in diversification by investing in all assets, but by forming a portfolio with only three of the five risky risky assets, and then allocating investment between the optimal portfolio and the risk-free asset. Quite frankly, I was surprised at some of the results that we found involving Berkshire Hathaway. It seemed like the perfect stock when they were isolating it individually. Well, I mean, just at face value, it looks like the perfect stock, right? Yeah, but I guess when you do further analysis, it doesn't work out. But that's why we're here. Yeah, we, all, we figured Ford wasn't too great, so that, that wasn't too sense. surprising. But yeah, Berkshire Hathaway, definitely surprised. To wrap up the entire process, we have built a cap and model using the portfolio of five risky assets. The four stocks that we have talked about throughout this production. And once again, the market index S&P 500. We found the efficient frontier of this portfolio of assets by minimizing variance at the given points of expected return. And we then went on to incorporate the risk-free asset and found the optimal portfolio with 13.25% in Google, 71.29% in 